Dzień dobry and welcome to a Brit in Poland. It's this weekend uh, it's been pretty cool. I take you to Augustov and I've just spent four days here uh, in the company of good friends. We've been camping, we've been on the river, we've been hiking and I have to say this is a very very beautiful part of Poland and one I would wholeheartedly recommend uh, coming if you love nature because this place is absolutely full of beautiful lakes, amazing forests. You have the city, but being honest, you would come here for the nature more than the city. Um, I have had an absolutely incredible time and this video is going to show you what there is to see around Augusta, uh, what there is to do here, and just to show you what it looks like. So stay tuned. We'll get to the video very shortly. Dzień dobry and welcome to A Brit in Poland. This channel is going to bring you everything you need to know about Poland. I am exploring the country, bringing you the history, trying to tell you about the culture and show you what it is really like to live here. So feel free to check out my other media, Instagram, Facebook, and I will share links to those in the comments. I also have a website, www.britinpoland.com, where I collate my videos for easy to view manner. Also, you are welcome to contribute to my efforts through Patronite or Patreon, and all descriptions are available below the video. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and please come back for more by subscribing, liking, or commenting. Thank you very much. Dozer Pachelia. So, Augustov is located in northeast Poland, in the Podlasia Voivodeship, though a lot of people seem to get confused and think it's in Missouri. We took the train, which was pretty uneventful, at least on the way there. And this trip, I'm going to take you on a day-by-day -day account on everything that we did and saw. So here's a rough route of what we did on day one. So of course we first got to the train station, which is yeah, a provincial st station. We uh, got to the campsite and first thing we did naturally was to start setting up the tents, which was pretty straightforward. We were given a nice area uh, to mark as our territory. And then we decided we're going to take a little bit of a walk but in the interest of time, we decided to get a taxi to the center, which cost about roughly 30 zloty, which split four or five ways is not that bad. We started off by going to the information center and picked up some maps. And then me and my friend Marta were the only ones who wanted to do any historical stuff. So we went to the museum. So I wasn't quite sure what the museum was before I went, but it turned out to be an ethnographical museum. And here you got to see a lot of stuff from the kind of 19th century. So you saw like local fishing implements and boats and weaving stuff and craft stuff. All the sort of stuff you see in the ethnographic museums of Poland. And I think every ethnographic museum in Poland was designed by the first person, the same person, I swear. Uh, so we get t to the square. So the Zygmunt August Square is the center of the city. And the statue you just saw there is of uh, Aug King Sigmus, Sigmund <laughs> the Second Augustus, uh, who was the king that founded this city back in 1550. But we'll talk a little bit more about the history as we go along. So... The square is beautiful, you know, it's one of the, uh, the nicest squares I've seen. And the park within the square was actually established in 1847 and was known as the Saxon Garden. So perhaps a bit of British influence there. The tenement houses surrounding uh, the square date from the 19th and 20th centuries. And this Jabka now uh, actually housed Napoleon in 1812 in one of his campaigns against Russia. The, uh, the column 
with the statue of Augustus uh, was actually built on the 450th anniversary of the granting of municipal rights. And the square itself was designed in 1550. Next, we get to the church, which uh, dominates the landscape somewhat. And it's the Minor Basilica of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I don't believe uh, that Jesus' heart can be found here, at least not physically. But it was a very beautiful church with some lovely gardens. It was built in the years 1905 to 1911 in a neo-Romanesque style. However, it was destroyed during the Second World War and rebuilt in the years 1945 to 1947. But on a nice hot sunny day, and we had a very hot weekend when we went, it was lovely to walk around and to see the various monuments. And there were quite a lot of monuments there. Here is a giant strawberry selling ice cream. I thought that was rather cool. Uh, they obviously like Dragon Ball Z in this town, fair play. We stopped for some food, so I picked up some basic Lithuanian dumplings. This is the, uh, the statue of Beata uh, the Albatross, who is from a famous song from 1965. And this is the Albatross she was from, a restaurant established in 1962. So this is basically the, the main... Uh, street and had some rather nice hotels and restaurants and stands selling things and it was a yeah very pleasant walk but we decided we were going to go by the waterside so here is uh, some of the boats uh, that you can take rides on there are a lot of boat trips available in this city here were some very interesting mushrooms on one of the trees and it was a very pleasant walk. There were a lot of bars. Here's the sign for the city, which actually says something surprising when you get up close. We'll go into that later. Here's a duck. There were a lot of ducks, surprisingly. And some lakeside uh, restaurants with paddle boats for rent. And we stopped by this field where there is like an amphitheater and a local band was playing though I was rather distressed that they weren't selling beer. But you could play giant chess, if you so choose. So, we, after departing the square, we decided, right, we're going to go back to the camp, so let's take a little bit of a walk. Here is part of the Augusta Canal that I will go into more detail in later, and a little monument about the foundation of the canal. This is the Canal Museum, which sadly I didn't have time to go. Unfortunately, two of the four days of the trip uh, were taken up. And here was a rather phallic-shaped church. Um, no comment. Uh, and there's like a little walkway connecting the sides. And here's a little tribute to Oxford. Or no. <laughs> there were a number of murals. And I'll show more. This was like a Winnie the Pooh one. And this was some government building, I believe. Uh, a few of us opted to walk back. The others got a taxi. And those of us that walked, we found a lovely forest path uh, that was leading pretty much right through the kind of the district. So it was a little bit nicer to walk down this forested path than it was down the streets. And we got stopped by a train, a very long train <laughs> carrying a lot of armoured vehicles, uh, which we noted were German, so perhaps to the front line uh, for Ukraine. And finally, we, uh, on our way back, we uh, stopped at the river, and there was a nice little bar here where we got some beer and enjoyed the sunset before making our final journey. This is the President's Villa, a building from 1934, which was visited by President Ignacy Mozyski several times and used as a prison by both the Soviets and Nazis. Now, as we were camping, for me, the number one thing you do on any camping trip is drinking and eating around a fire. So we made sure to stock up in Bedronka and get plenty of alcohol and food. 
day two, we decided we were going to go for a little bit of a, a trip around the lake. So here's roughly the kind of course that we took. And we started off feeling very hungover. We were quite lucky uh, to have hammocks available, which was, uh, you know, very nice. And the lake was in an easy walking distance uh, from the camp. So we were in good spirits, if somewhat tired. We may have stopped for some snacks and maybe a beer or two in the local shop, which was nice and open on a Sunday, which is always a bonus. And some of us hired these like, pedal bikes, uh, which I think we spent, we were there for two hours and it was about 120 zloty. So about 30 zloty each, which is, you know, pretty, pretty cheap to be honest. And other people decided to go by kayak and let's say do a little bit more extensive a tour of the lake. Now this is actually uh, Biawe Lake and it's uh, 476 hectares in size with a maximum depth of 30 meters. Luckily, uh, not too many of us decided to swim and when we did, it was more in the shallow end. So we did a little bit of exploring. Um, some of the, there were a lot of boats on this lake and the waves were sometimes a little bit annoying when you're on a paddle boat. I'm not perhaps the best swimmer, so I was clinging on for life, um, making sure that the boat didn't capsize. I also, of course, didn't want to get my equipment wet. But as you can see, there are some little islands here. The lake is surrounded uh, by forests. And the Augusta Forest actually takes up about 114,000 hectares around the city. So it's rather impressive, but we had a lovely time on the water. Some people decided to have a swim, good for them. You know, whatever floats your boat. But it was all in good fun. And there was lots of splashing. And of course, people hugging you when they were soaking wet, which is, you know, a wonderful pastime in Poland. We thought about stopping here for food, but they only sold fish by the gram and we were a little bit skeptical on pricing. So we decided, okay, we're going to walk back, go back to the camp and get something to eat there. And luckily the camp had plenty of options in the restaurant. So this was kind of a white vegetable soup that was quite nice. And... I keep forgetting the name of this dish, it's shocking. But it was, ah, goulash, yes. And it was, oh, yeah. We were pretty pleasantly surprised with the food that we had. But everyone was a bit tired after the previous night and the time in the lake. So a lot of people took a bit of a nap while I was like, hmm, I'm not in a napping mood. And I ran, there were not enough hammocks for all of us. So we spent a little bit of time on the lake, just chilling. Yeah, the guy who owned that boat must have been very patient for us to sit on it, but never mind. But we had a lovely time and we decided, okay, we'll be a little bit active. So we played a bit of volleyball and had a nice chill in the campsite. Uh, Camp Zatotska, I believe, just uh, in case you're wondering. It was about 50 zloty a night and it was very well equipped. We even had fridges, electricity points, as well as the bar and these wonderful facilities. And volleyball is something I never really played outside of school, but I've been getting into more lately in Poland. And it's, even though football is the number one sport in Poland, volleyball is a very close second. And of course, our more academic types decided to play some chess, which I enjoy as well. One of these days, Piotr Urbanski, I will beat you. And of course, we had another fire. We were a little bit more subdued tonight because, well, we were all pretty tired. Uh, but we still had a good time, sang some songs, did a bit of dancing, and generally just made sure that we got the most of the camping experience. Uh, for me, nothing is more fun than having a nice fire. And I made sure to bring some marshmallows and Toasting marshmallows over a fire is not so popular in Poland, but I thought I'd better bring this tradition. 
Now this rather dark video shows the limits of my camera, but we did a lot of stargazing when we were there and we were exposed to some shooting stars. And day three. So day three, a number of us decided we were going to go for a bit of a hike. And this is an idea of the route that we took. So we followed the green trail primarily at the beginning, uh, which was following the river. And we had quite a few sights on the way, as well as the, the gorgeous nature, the sunken boats. Uh, there was this little historical trail which told us about the local area as we went along. And luckily we had a couple of Polish translators there uh, who were able to read it for us without us having to use uh, Google Translate. There were quite a number of cemeteries on the way. We passed through a few villages. This one had some lovely ornate uh, decorations on, this, on the, uh, the walls, which I really enjoyed. Yet another cross, uh, quite a few shrines and cemeteries, as I said, as we went along. And here is another section of the Augusta Canal, and we got to, to watch, basically, um, a boat going through. It, the canal is actually 101 kilometers in length, comprises of 18 locks, and it was built to circumnavigate the Prussian taxes and to move goods around Poland more freely. And at the time, it cost about 9.5 million zloty to build. So, pretty impressive. Uh, this was a monument to forest dwellers who helped to fight during the war. You had quite a lot of insurgents based in Augusta that were, you know, actively fighting the Nazi regime. And you have a cemetery just opposite that. And on our hike, we thought we'd better get some food. So we went to this bar Zatotska. And there were some interesting historical things. Um, we... Saw a lovely swan family, which you don't see every day. Of course, these ducklings inspiring the Ugly Duckling song. And I couldn't help but get some skabolva. And people had some interesting nettle soup, and there were these fish pierogi. So not, let's say, typical cuisine in, in around Poland, so something a bit different. And we then found this rather interesting church, which was kind of half church, half hunting lodge. And it was quite bizarre. So we went to uh, Studzienice. Um, and this is like a little island, kind of, um, which is very holy, you can say. And we actually got to the shrine, which uh, dates from 1847. And you can see the shrine just here and this is a neo-renaissance chapel and just next door to it you find a statue commemorating the visit of john paul ii in 1999 there was also a holy well which was pretty cool and apparently the pope before his pope days he liked to go kayaking and i think this is one of the areas of poland where he frequented his kayaking activities, at least from what I understand. The lake surrounding that was uh, 251 hectares, if you're interested. Lots of lakes. There are like nine lakes around Augusta. So we continued on our walk, and this was a little sort of Soviet German cemetery. And apparently you can tell because it hasn't got any Polish flags. This was a weird millstone. And here was a, a little crossing that allowed us to, to go across the lake. And what we went on a bit of a hunt. And we were looking for this hermitage, which I read about. So we were following all of these little forest trails. And then we got to a basically a swamp. And we kind of decided after a while that the swamp was perhaps not the ideal way to cross. So we tried to find some alternative crossing. We were going through all these paths, going through all these woodland. And yeah, here's the result of us attempting to get across the swamp. Not ideal. So we got a little bit lost in the woods. We were attacked by spiders, by branches, uh, wasps and things. And we eventually said enough is enough after about an hour and gave up and decided to go back. So we then went back to the camp because we'd had a nice hike during the day. 
And those of us who left, you can see in great spirits and perhaps very tired, had one last session around the fire. So on day four, most of the group, well, basically the whole group decided to just stay at the camp, but I still hadn't seen everything I wanted to see. So I decided to just walk. So I found this little uh, cemetery, this spa, and Augusta was uh, made into a spa town in uh, 1993. And I decided to follow some locals because there were a lot of locals taking this avenue. And this avenue takes you uh, to the Netsko Lake, uh, which is a name derived from the Yacht Vingian word to throw with a max depth of 25 meters. So I was enjoying this nice walk along the, the lake promenade, capturing more beautiful views of this beautiful area. And then I found a little beekeeping shrine. I don't know if it was an act of use. Uh, there was a statue of Maria Cottesbeeker. Yeah, I butchered that name. But she was a famous singer of Augusta of Knights. And there were a couple of piers. I read about the piers and I thought, oh, okay. This is the famous pier? But no, this is not the famous pier. We're about to get to that one. It was a little bit of a rope park. And the famous pier is this one here. It's called like the Radio Free Pier. And it's actually the second largest in Poland after Sopot. And it was built in 2007. Now, I realize I haven't talked about the history. So as we take in a few more sites, let me just say that Augustus was, uh, this area was originally inhabited by the Jotvingian tribe, who was a pagan tribe who were wiped out by the Teutonic Knights in the 13th century. And it's said that the site was originally kind of like a toll station to get across the river, and that was established in 1496 with an inn built in 1526. Uh, in 1550, the starost uh, Piotr Czwalszewski and architect engineer Job Pretfus uh, were sent to set, up, set out the settlement. And uh, Meiderberg city rights were established in 1557. There are a couple of foundation myths because obviously this, is, this city is uh, surrounding King Sigmund and the uh, second Augustus. Uh, one is he got lost hunting in the forest and found shelter with hospitable locals. Another one is he actually had his first meeting with Barbara Bradzivil, who would become his second wife and Queen of Poland. In 1656, oh sorry, this is the uh, one of the Jewish cemeteries, by the way. And yeah, in 1656, uh, the city was burned down by rebel Tatars during the Swedish deluge. In 1710, it was decimated by a plague brought by various troops visiting from various armies who were there during the Third Northern War. In 1795, the uh, city was occupied by Prussia. In 1807 and 1812, it was occupied by Napoleon's army. In 1815, it finally came back to Poland after the Congress of Vienna. In 1825, uh, the construction of the Augusta Canal began, which was completed in 1839 after the November Uprising. And in 1899, the first railway came to the city. You can see we're getting back to the centre now. Um, in 1941, uh, there was the Battle of Augustov, and it was basically a big fight between the Red Army, i.e. the Soviets, and the Nazi forces, who were trying to take control over the city. The Nazis won that, built some ghettos, as Nazis do. Uh, but the city was taken back in 1944 by the Red Army, who decided to hunt down the local insurgents. And, oh yes, here is Augusta, the future. I'm not quite sure what that means, but it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, so the, the Soviets hunted down these insurgents and decided they were going to wrap these people in barbed wire, chuck them in pits, and flood the pits with water. So, lovely, lovely times. And the population of Augusta is actually about 30,000 now. So it's not the biggest place, but 
In 2014, it was dubbed the nicest place. Here is a mural of Einstein, by the way, and Michael Jackson. But yes, in 2014, you had this Milka competition um, to dub it the nicest city in Poland. So this area of the city was few, full of what they called murals on Google Maps. Some interesting artwork. I think mural is perhaps a slight stretch by the definition. Um, but it was still an interesting sight to see. So you have the, uh, here are what I would say are proper murals, proper wall size things. And there are a couple I noted on the way back. And they were very well painted and creative. Uh, this was a, like a sound park. So lots of random kind of musical instruments to play and little things to keep you occupied. But essentially in spirit, Augusta was an amazing place. I mean, I spent four days there. I felt I could have spent even longer. Oh, sorry, this is another church, which is the uh, Church of Our Lady of Czestochowa. Uh, 1912, it was a Russian military church, and in 1921, it became the Polish Army Garrison Church. Oh, so many random facts. Okay, but yes, we stopped for a bit more food to finish the day before making our way back after a three-hour delay in the train. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, please subscribe, and feel free to contribute to my Patreon account. See you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Doza Virginia.